Ah, good day there, King's Kids. Ah, great to have the members of God's royal family back here again. I am so glad that every one of you is here today. Ah, the story we are going to be learning about is the time when the Israelites were in the desert with a whole heap of snakes and they needed to learn how to have faith in God. Ah, the verse to remember this week comes from Mark 11.22. Ah, it is a great one to learn. Have faith in God. Uh, make sure you learn that one. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. I huddled in the corner of our tent and listened. I was supposed to be sleeping, but I couldn't help hearing the words that the visitors to our tent were speaking. They were cross words. They were fearful words. They were angry words against God. They were words I had been hearing a lot lately. Everyone was grumbling. They grumbled about the weather. They grumbled about the lack of shade. They grumbled about the food. Then I heard my mother's voice. Remember how God has taken care of us for 40 years. Our sandals have not worn out. Our clothing is like new. We have never gone hungry. We have been sheltered from the heat of the sun and shielded from the cold. God has blessed us. We should not grumble or complain. The last thing I remembered before falling asleep was angry voices still speaking against Moses and against God. When the sun came up, the grumbling continued. Then I heard a scream in the camp. And another! 
And another! I ran to see what was happening, but my mother pushed me back into the tent. God has withdrawn his protection from the camp. There are fiery snakes everywhere, son, and they're biting people. Stay here. No, I thought. I am seven years old. I am not afraid of snakes. I can outrun them. I waited and waited. The sun was getting low. At last, my moment came. I slipped outside. Snakes were everywhere. I knew I must be careful. I saw Moses. He was putting something on a pole. I stepped closer, trying to see what it was, but felt a fierce pain in my ankle. It was a snake bite. Mama, I yelled. Open your eyes. I heard my mama whispering to me. Open your eyes and look at the snake. I heard her voice, but I didn't want to look at a snake. Snakes are poisonous. Snakes hurt. Open your eyes. Look at the snake Moses has on the pole. God has spoken to Moses. Trust me, have faith in God. Slowly, very slowly, I opened my eyes. I saw Moses. I saw the pole he was holding. Look higher. Look at the snake. I looked up. There was a bronze snake on the pole. My eyes opened wide. The pain was gone. My ankle was fine again. How did the snake heal me, I asked. <laughs> the snake didn't make you well. God healed you. You looked with faith and God did the rest. I smiled. I am going to trust and obey God for the rest of my life. Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk about anger. Anger is a strong feeling that everyone feels at some time. Anger is not a sin. Anger is the feeling that happens when we feel that someone has done the wrong thing against us. It's okay to feel anger. It is not okay to hurt anyone or break things when you are angry. Use the tool STOP when you start to feel angry. S is for stop. Just take a break no matter what you're doing. T is for take a breath. Feel the sensation of your own breathing, which brings you back to the present moment. O is to observe. Look around at what is happening, for good or bad, inside you or out. Just take notice of it. P is to proceed. Having briefly checked in with the present moment, continue with whatever it was you were doing. This will help you feel calmer and in control of yourself and your emotions. Boys and girls, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body, 
and take care of each other. Hi there everyone, Stephen here. Are you ready for another story from the Bible? Well, today's story comes from Numbers chapter 21. The Israelites had been wandering around the desert for 40 years. They were near the promised land. They were so close that they could see the lovely green mountains and the nice cool valleys. What a nice change from the desert. For 40 years, God had provided them with manna to eat and water to drink. Then they started again to grumble to Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness, they complained. There's no water, there's no bread, and we're tired of eating manna. Instead of appreciating what God had done to keep them safe, they accused God of causing their hardships. Poor Moses tried to tell them that God was leading them and caring for them, but they wouldn't listen. They just kept complaining. Finally, God decided that he would take away his protection and let them see what would happen. Around the campsite in the desert lived many poisonous snakes. With God's protection lifted, these desert snakes moved into the campsite and soon they overran the camp. Many of the Israelites were bitten and so in almost every tent, someone was dead or dying from the poisonous snake bites. It didn't take the people long to see that they had been wrong about God's protection. They came to Moses and said, we sinned when we grumbled about you and God. Please, pray that God will take away the snakes. So Moses prayed and God heard him. God told Moses to make a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who had been bitten by a snake could look at the bronze snake and they would live. Just as God had told him, Moses made the snake. The people who looked at the bronze snake were healed by God. Some of the Israelites didn't have faith in God and chose not to follow his directions. So they didn't look at the snake on the pole. Because they did not obey, God could not heal them. The snake in the desert symbolizes Jesus dying for our sins. It was not the metal snake that had the power to heal them. It was their faith in God that led him to heal them. Many years later, Jesus in referring to his death said that just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so Jesus must be lifted up and everyone who believes may have eternal life. It is through our faith in Jesus lifted up on the cross that we can be saved. So today, believe what the Bible says. Have faith in God. Look at what he did on the cross so we could be saved. Jesus died so we can live with him forever. Make sure you check the story out for yourself in the Bible. See you next time, kids. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. Uh, hi, Shane. Uh, how was school? Uh, hi, Grandpa. Uh, school was all right, just the usual. Uh, like what, Shane? Uh, you know, a bit of science, Bible, English, maths and geography. Uh, so what's your favourite subject at school, Shane? Oh, Grandpa, I just love geography and Bible. Uh, why do you like those subjects so much, Shane? Well, you know, Grandpa, these are my favourite subjects because as our town continues to grow and more people are visiting our church, I am getting to know where many of them have come from and I'm finding out so many interesting facts about people and cultures from all around the world. Geography helps me to understand where people have come from and why they settle in the places they do. Ah, uh, that's very interesting, Shane. Hey, Grandpa, did you know that there were lots of people travelling around in Bible times? And even though Jesus was born in Bethlehem, he had to move to Egypt because of a political situation. Ah, uh, well, wow, Shane, you really are learning about lots of different people and countries. Ah, uh, did you learn about that in your Bible class? Oh, yes, Grandpa. And there's even this story in the Bible in Acts 8, 26 to 28 of a banker from Ethiopia, Grandpa. Oh, I always thought the Bible stories were just about people who lived in Jerusalem and Capernaum. Uh, but I've been learning so much more as I've been doing Discovery Bible reading with Andy. Ah, uh, yes, Shane. It's amazing the things that we learn about ourselves and God's church when we really take the time to read the Bible. Our church is made up of many different people and cultures. As we learn to work together and worship together, we become an incredible vehicle of God's grace. You know, Shane, 
There is a passage in the Bible, 1 Timothy 4.12, that says, uh, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Uh, be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith and your purity. I hope that you will always value the fact that though we may be all different, under Jesus, uh, we are all equal members in his church. And now please, tell me more about that banker in the Bible as you get me my wallet. And we give our offering to God to help further the work of his church. Uh, g'day there boys and girls. And again, welcome along to Balloon Kaboom. Uh, I've got my friend here with me as well, Pastor Darren. G'day Pastor Darren. Hi Arnie. Hi boys and girls. It's so good. Good to be back again. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? What are we going to be doing with the um, balloons today, Pastor Darren? We're going to make an animal. An animal. Here we go. I'm going to inflate the balloon, tie it off. Yep. I'm going to start by making the head. Let's get ahead. <laughs> mm. so you're bright today, Arnie. And another two bubbles. Two more bubbles. And I'm going to bring these two bubbles through. Right, two bubbles through. And then I'm going to bring this one right around right. the whole head. Yep. And then roll it through. Roll it through. And pinch it. And right up. And there it is. Ah, so that's the head. That's right, Arnie. You're not supposed to quit while you're ahead. <laughs> I'm not quitting, Arnie. Okay. We're going to keep going. Let's keep going. That's still tangerine. Nice, big, long balloon. Yep. And a lot of squeezing here. Oh, lots of squeezing. Fold it and squeeze it. Right, yep. Fold it and squeeze it. Right, fold it and squeeze it. Fold it and squeeze it. Fold it and squeeze it. All folded and squeezed. That's right. Mm. And pull it out. All right. I'm going to attach it onto the head. Makes a funny shape. Let's see what it might be, boys and girls. Have you been guessing? So now it needs some eyes, Arnie. All right, eh? Tuck the eyes in. Yeah, push them into the sockets. That's mm. right. Okay. And a long, slithery tongue. Oh, sounds scary. Some nostrils. Oh, some nostrils. Fangs. Oh, fangs. That's, that, that's a scary word. Okay. Well, one more thing. Oh, one more thing. Because in this story we're learning today, mm. yep. this animal was placed on a pole. On a pole. Oh, I think I know what it is, Pastor Darren. You remember anywhere in the Bible where an animal was placed on a pole? I think I know what it is, Pastor Darren. I, I do this quite often. I go uh, get a worm, because I think it's a worm, and I put it on my fishing pole. <laughs> Does a worm have fangs, Arnie? Oh, I haven't seen a worm with fangs. No, no, nor have I, actually. Guess again, Arnie. Uh, OK. It could be a tiger snake. That's right. Well, you're close. It's a snake. Oh, it's a snake. You know, I don't like snakes. There's a story in the Bible about snakes. There's quite a few stories about snakes. Okay, right. But in this story, mm -hmm. the people of Israel were in the desert and they were whinging and complaining right. and all these snakes turned up and the snakes were biting them and they were getting sick. And you know what, what God told Moses? He said, get a pole, okay. make a bronze snake. Right. Put the snake on the pole mm -hmm. and anyone that looks to the pole yeah. and the snake and has faith will live. You know what Jesus said in the New Testament? Now, what did he say? Uh, Pastor in Darren? John, he says, and I, if I be lifted, lifted up, up. Mm -hmm. I will call all men unto me. So in these troubled times, mm -hmm. there's a bit of trouble around right now. Oh, there is, yes. Jesus says, look to him. So look up to the cross. Look up to Jesus and live. That, that's a great message, Pastor Darren, but oh, I don't want to hold on to that snake. You don't want to take him home? No. no <laughs> okay. I don't want to take him home because I just don't like snakes. Oh, well, I'll look after him then. Okay, you do that. Now, anyway, uh, boys and girls, we've got to go again. So from Balloon Kaboom, uh, we'll catch you next time and we'll see you later on, Pastor Darren. Bye, Arnie. Bye, boys and girls. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 you just hold on to it yourself, okay? <laughs> And today we're going to be finger knitting a snake. What you need is glue, googly eyes, and wool. 
First, you need to grab your wool and tie it into a knot. Put it around your finger, grab the bottom part and bring it over to the top part. Twist the wool around your finger, grab the bottom part and drag it over the top part. Twist the wool around your finger, take the bottom part and put it over the top part. Wrap the wool around your finger, grab the bottom part and drag it over the top part. Keep on going until it's taller than your mum or dad. Mine's pretty long now. Now we finger knit the finger knitting. Twist it over your finger, drag the bottom part over the top part. Twist it around your finger, get the bottom part over the top part. The last time, pull the string right through and that locks it. Now we need to make the tongue. Now use red wool for the tongue and do the same thing. This doesn't have to be very long. When it's long enough, cut the wool so that there's enough to turn to the snake. You're going to poke the wool through the hole and lock it off. Now tie the tongue onto the snake. Now trim off the extra wool. Now that you have your tongue, you have to glue on the eyes. And now you have your very own finger knitted snake. Make sure it doesn't bite you. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and they looked at the bronze snake, they lived. Wow, that was great reading from numbers 21, four to nine. Yeah, I enjoyed that, Andy. Yeah, let's pray. Okay. Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start summarising, OK? Uh, they'd been out there travelling in the desert for ages and they were getting tired and grumpy and they kept saying, are we there yet? And they had no bread and they had no water and the food that they did have, they didn't like. Yeah, and, and in verse 6, God sent poisonous snakes and some of the Israelites got bitten and some of them even died. And the people came to Moses and said, we sinned, please pray to the Lord so he will take the snakes away. So Moses prayed. So God told Moses to make a snake and put it up on a pole. Uh, so he made a bronze one. So if anyone got bitten, they could look up at the bronze snake and live. Hey Shane, let's do the five discovery Bible questions. Cool. So the first one, what's new? Well, Andy, when they looked up at the bronze snake, they were cured from their snake bites. So what? Kind of like a miracle then? Absolutely, Andy. I would say so. Now, Andy, what surprises you? Well, Shane, at the end of verse 5, um, there is no bread, there's no water, and we detest this miserable food. Are they talking about manna? I thought they liked the manna. Yeah, I think they are talking about manna, Andy, but um, they were probably a little bit tired of it. You don't ever complain, Andy, uh, when mum feeds you the same thing more than once. Well, Shane, uh, mm, uh, maybe sometimes. I guess I shouldn't complain, should I? No, we shouldn't, Andy. So, Shane, what don't you understand? 
Well, Andy, why didn't God just make the snakes go away instead of having to look up at the bronze snake to live? Well, you know, I think that God wanted to teach them about faith. They had to have faith to do what God told them by looking at the bronze snake to live rather than just having the problem solved for them. Yeah, I get that. Hey, Andy, what will you obey or apply this week? Well, Shane, I guess that it's about having faith, faith in God and following what he has asked us to do. I'm going to have faith and try to do what God wants me to do. Me too, Andy. So, Shane, what are you going to share with someone this week? Well, Andy, I'm going to have faith in God, don't complain, and look up and live. Hey, how about we pray? Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. See you next week, Andy. Yeah, see you, Shane. I tell you what, boys and girls, if I was back there in the desert, I certainly would have kept my eyes on that snake on the pole. Uh, just like the Israelites looked at the snake so that they could live, uh, we need to look to Jesus and keep our eyes on him. Uh, look up and live and have faith in God. Uh, these are both awesome and true things to remember. Uh, when you are tempted to grumble and complain about things, remember the story of the snake on the pole. Uh, focus on the good things that are around you instead. And know that Jesus loves you all so very much. Uh, he wants what's best for you and to take care of you. Uh, so have faith in him. Uh, anyway, uh, time to go. I'll catch you all next week. Uh, stay safe and God bless.